Earlier in the course, when discussing lighting and camera, I recommended that you don't use 3ds Max's built-in exposure control because you cannot remove any tone mapping that it applies at render time. Instead, you should save out a raw .exr or other high dynamic range format and then bring it into some other program for tone mapping. You can do this in almost any image manipulation or compositing program. I'm going to choose Photoshop because it's quite simple and it's likely that you already have Photoshop in your toolbox. So let's open up the EXR document I've saved. Go to the File menu and choose File Open. In the Exercise Files, I've added a Photoshop folder. Within there, we have an EXR document, 1205ToneMap.EXR. Open that. In the Open EXR Read Options dialog, choose As Alpha Channel and click OK. We've got a raw 32-bit image here. It can be significantly improved, and there are lots of ways to do that. The shortest distance between two points in this case is going to be converting it to an 8-bit format, and it will need to be tone mapped. That will take us to the HDR toning dialog, which is a destructive dialog, by the way. So if you need to revert changes, this is not a good workflow. But we're saving the original EXR document and the final 8-bit document separately. So I'm going to go into the image menu and look at the mode. It's a 32-bit per channel high dynamic range image. I'm going to switch it over to 8 bits per channel. The HDR toning dialog comes up and it's got some default settings and previewing is enabled by default. When that checkbox is on, we're seeing the result of the toning. You can turn that off to see the original raw image. I'll remove the detail. We don't need any sharpening, so we'll set the detail to zero and press tab. And it looks like it's very slightly overexposed. Some of these areas here are a little bit hot. So I'll bring the exposure down just a little bit. Let's set it to negative 0.2 and press tab. We're just knocking that exposure down by about one fifth of a stop. And again, we can see the difference when we turn preview on and off. For the greatest degree of control over the tone mapping, we'll want to apply a toning curve. We can open up the toning curve and histogram section, and we can click to create a few points. Let's create three points on this curve and then we'll move them around. So as I increase this point in the lower left, bring that up higher on the screen, I'm increasing the output of the blacks. I'm increasing the brightness of those dark areas. We can plug in some numeric values here just for precision. I'll set the input value for that point to 25% and the output to 45%, and that's really going to increase the brightness of the shadows there. Then the next control point, Let's set its input to 50% and its output to 60%. And then the third control point, I'll set to an input of 75% and an output of 80%. And we've significantly increased the brightness in the shadows there. We can pump up the colors a little bit and make this pop a bit more by increasing the vibrance. Let's set that to a value of 20. Okay, those are pretty good settings. We can turn preview on and off and see a before and after picture. We've significantly brightened the shadows there. Click OK. And again, that is a destructive act. You want to save out to a new file. Go to File, Save As, and save it as a new PNG or other 8-bit format. And I've got an example already there for you. And click Save. For the PNG format options, I'll leave it at Large File Size and click OK. Now we've made a destructive change to our original EXR document. So if we close that document, we'll be prompted to save. We don't want to save in this case, so click No. We've got two versions, the raw EXR and an 8-bit PNG that's been destructively tone mapped. That's one of many myriad ways of adjusting the tone mapping or the contrast curve of a 32-bit high dynamic range image. That's a very simple example using the Photoshop HDR toning tool that appears when we convert a 32-bit image into an 8-bit color space.